I'm Markel Folks, and I'm up to my neck in the recruitment process. This is episode one of my Capital Who's documentary. Um, I want to talk to you about how my recruitment's been going. Um, my very first offer is from uh, High Point University, and this is where it all got started. Um, really, um, they really opened it up for me and letting the other coaches know that um, that I was good enough to play at the college level. Um, I have offers from Seton Hall, Pittsburgh, uh, Louisville, Memphis. South Carolina, Cal State Northridge, Georgetown, Cincinnati, George Mason, Washington, Miami University, Towson, Maryland, Florida State, Kansas, Virginia, Penn State, West Virginia, Xavier, DePaul, Rhode Island, USC, High Point, NC State, Texas, Arizona, Oklahoma State, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest. And um, I have plenty of schools inter interested in me, like Kentucky, um, North Carolina, Duke. Um, they're keeping in contact with me, and I just hope that uh, I'm blessed enough to pick up off from them. Um, they really uh, send me a lot of mail. I got a lot of mail from uh, Wake Forest, um, Miami, really. Sends a lot of mail. Uh, Kansas shows love a lot. Um, I get a lot of mail from Maryland. They get do a good job of sending me mail with uh, the flag and the gym and stuff. Um, Washington sends a lot of mail. Um, it just it's just a lot of love. Uh, West Virginia sends mail, and um, it's just a lot. Virginia Tech also. Um, I got Memphis. Where's Memphis? Got Memphis in here somewhere. Uh, Memphis. Nebraska. Somewhere. Really far. They haven't offered yet, but they keep in contact with me. Um, it's just a lot. Georgetown. Really, all the schools do a good job of showing love and sending me a lot of mail, and I really appreciate it. Um, it's just a blessing, really. And I'm, and I'm honored to, to have this coming towards my way. Unofficial. Unofficial visit to uh, Xavier University right now. It's um, 9.35 in the morning. Uh, got here a little early just to do this. Um, my second time on campus, so it should be fun. This right here, this right here, for all the great ones to play, right here, right here. <laughs> Include the Markel. <laughs> Um, I might take a quick nap before we play. We play at 7 o'clock tonight. It's a big day for us and me and my team, the DC Blue Devils. Um, it's the first day of the second week. Uh, I just want to come out and show everybody that, that I'm the best player in the country. That's what I think. And um, after all the work that I put in, really putting a lot of work to, to get to the point I'm at right now. I just want to keep going. So, um, I just want to come out today and really just start off by coming out strong from the beginning, scoring, dunking, getting my teammates involved, and um, go from there and come out with a W. And then we're gonna watch my my friends play for DC uh, Premier. So um, I just want to start by getting focused. So I'm about to hit a quick nap, and um, I'll be back when I wake up. <laughs> out.
recording. Hey, Jack, say what's up, Jack. Hey. <laughs> Nate. Thank you, Mr. Stall. Cool, bro. That's illegal. That's the news on the camera. That's a good fadeaway. That's, that's, that's the documentary. That's the Capitol Hoops? A lot of people don't know that. I dream Mountain Dew before every game, so uh, it just helps me get energy and um, get going. So that's what I'm going to do now. Give me a, a, a Mountain Dew. Start, start drinking this before the game, you know? I'm going to have energy. <coughs> be able to do me, man. Business-wise, I've been on unofficial visits to Xavier, Maryland, Penn State, Louisville, um, Virginia. Um, where else have I been? Virginia. Um, those are about it right now. I plan to take uh, more unofficial visits when I get a chance to. Uh, my schedule's so busy, so whenever I get a chance, I'm gonna try to take unofficial visits and. Uh, Hopefully sooner or later, um, I'm going to get to be able to sit down with my mom and Keith, my trainer, and um, try to figure out where I'm going to take my official business to once I get a chance. So, Capital Hoops here with Markel Fultz's mother, Ebony Fultz. Ebony, as, as the mother of uh, one of the top basketball players in the, in the D.C. metro area, you know, tell us about, just tell us a little bit about Markel growing up and, and, and where he's at in his life right now. Okay. Um, Markel growing up, he started playing basketball probably at the age of four. Really, he came out the womb asking for a ball. I remember um, growing up and going to the grocery store. At the time when he was little, they used to have the big carts in the aisle with all the balls in it and stuff. And we couldn't go out, go down an aisle without him asking for a ball, be it a baseball, a beach ball a basketball, whatever kind of ball, he would always reach out and, and yell ball and have to get a hold of that ball. So it came to a point where we would try not to go down the aisles that had balls on it because we had probably about 15, 20 balls in the house at all times because I would have to buy the balls every time we um, went past them. But growing up, Markel has been always been like a hard worker. He's always loved basketball. Um, he started at Good Luck Community Center playing on a five and under team at the age of four. And ever since, that was his first organized um, basketball. And ever since then, he's always been on a team. I've always tried to place Markel on teams where he wasn't the best player because he, um, he always could play and always was good. You know, always had things he could, needed to work on, but he was he would always stand out amongst the rest of the players. So we moved around quite a bit to make sure he wasn't the best player on the team. He played for um, Slam and Jam, the Merlin Panthers, Team Turner, 
Um, he used to play for number 14, the Boys and Girls Club Uptown. He played for Emory Elite under Coach Matt. So he's been playing basketball for a long time. Um, and today, where we are today, it's like he wanted to go to DeMatha. He started going to camp there when he was like nine years old. And when it came time to go to high school, that's where he said he wanted to go. So um, we applied, he got accepted. He started out on the freshman team, then went to the JV team, and then moved up to varsity this year. He won MVP for the freshman and JV team um, both years. And this year, as you know, he's just had an amazing year. So for me as a mom, to watch him come from four to where he is today, it's just like, it's a little surreal to see where he is today, but his hard work is paying off, you know. He's been working out with his trainer, Keith Williams, since he was like seven years old. We would go to the old run and shoot, and Markel would have a game. He'd work out in the morning, He'd go to his game and he'd ask me, Mom, can I go back and work out with Keith again? Which Keith found very strange because his workouts aren't easy. A lot of times kids cry the first time they work out with him because it's so much. It's two hours continuous and he does not allow them to take a break um, very often. So Markel, Markel has achieved a lot. He set goals for himself and he has achieved them. And I know, you know, he has much, much more to come. So not not long from now, Markel isn't going to be under your roof anymore. Oh, wow. He's going to be playing basketball at, at, at the highest level in the NCAA. Where what do you tell Markel as he sorts through this massive amount of mail and these phone calls and these letters? And he has you know pr probably the biggest decision of his life to date to make sometime you know in the next year or so. How do you you know how, how do you prepare him for that and how do you? Just kind of be, be his guide and while he makes that process? Um, sort of like the same way preparing any child for life and decision making and having to make hard decisions. He has so many offers right now. It's going to be a hard decision for him to decide. So many good schools, so many great schools that are um, have extended an offer. But what I tell him is to um, think about where he wants to be. I tell him this is your first chapter in your adult life where you're gonna to have to make a hard decision. The decision is yours. I'm here to advise you, your trainer's here to advise you, and we're here to support you. But this decision is gonna be your decision because you have to go to the school and you have to be there for how many other years you're gonna be there. And you're gonna to have to deal with the different situations that arise at that school. So I tell them to you know, pray about it often, trust in God, um, trust in his heart, and pay attention to what the coaches are saying to him and trust, see if he has any feelings or anything, any emotions about it, and that'll help him make his decision. Does part of you want, want to see him stay stay close to home or is it just, is that is that not really a big factor? Um, It's not a big factor because, you know, I try to focus on this is his life, I can't hold him back. Um, but part of me wants to see him stay home so I can be very close to him. But part of me wants him to go away because I just believe that by going away and not having mom around the corner, you'll have to deal with more situations. You'll have to problem solve. And I just won't be there at your rescue. Going away, you know, it'll take me a little time to get to him, but I can still get to him wherever he is. But I think the maturity process of um, going away would be good for him. I think if he's around the corner, he might try to bring his laundry home every week for me to wash. So um, it really doesn't make a difference to me. It's six and one hand and a half a dozen and the other. All right, Ebony Falls, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Markel Folks and I'm up to my neck in the recruitment process. Yeah.